Hi, Year 11s. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our third PowerPoint in the ecosystems topic. Uh, this will be the last one, most likely, for the term. Um, this one will coincide with, I believe, Unit 4.4 in your textbook. So let's let's get started. And what we're looking at today is going to be ecosystem diversity, so the differences in the different ecosystems that we can find. So first off, what are the environmental components of an ecosystem that determine the type of community that's going to exist there? So whenever you go to a different ecosystem, that ecosystem is going to have producers, consumers, decomposers that are specific to that ecosystem. They've been evolved over millions of years and have adapted to survive under the conditions that that ecosystem provides. So they are special to that ecosystem. The composition of the ecosystem, therefore, has to be determined by the environmental conditions of the habitats that are available. Um, we, can, we can see this when there's ecosystems with similar environmental conditions, evolved in similar fashions, and they'll have organisms that are very similar in those areas. Now, so for a particular species to survive in a habitat, we have to consider several different factors that might be involved. Um, so the first is the interaction between different organisms. So is it going to be, what type of prey is going to be available for it to eat? What kind of predators are going to be hunting on it? Is there going to be organisms that can live alongside that provide communalism or mutualism? Things like that. The availability of resources is going to go for water, food, shelter, etc. You've got weather and climate. What's the temperature like? Is it going to be boiling hot? In a, so therefore, an animal that needs cold temperatures is not going to survive. And lastly, the impact that humans have on that area. So if it's an animal that's living in a forest, is there going to be a forest that's going to be constantly disturbed by humans and therefore the organisms aren't going to be able to thrive? There are therefore important factors we must include when we're looking at ecosystems and environments in general. That's sunlight, water, temperature, nutrients, wind, salinity, and wave action and we're going to look at all of those this week in the PowerPoint and that's where our PowerPoint is going to continue on now. So let's start that by looking at sunlight and we have this beautiful live sunlight right in front of us now. So sunlight is the main energy source for all ecosystems. It provides the energy for uh, those first few producers to create food and the food chains to actually start off. So sunlight is very important for photosynthesizing plants. Now in something like a rainforest Competition for light is very, very high. So often there'll be plants growing as tall as they can to try and get the most sunlight. It's a race to see who can get to the top and get the most sunlight. Because if you're down in the understory of the rainforest, you're going to receive filtered light of much less energy than those plants at the top are receiving. So there's not enough energy, well, not as much energy there for you to photosynthesize. In marine environments as well, for example, there is no plants below 100 metres in depth because the sunlight just can't get there. And if there's no sunlight there, there can't be any photosynthesis and the plants can't grow. Temperature. So when we were looking at classification the other week and we went through the hierarchy of different animals, we noted that birds and mammals were the only two vertebrae in that category of vertebrae that were warm-blooded. Everything else was cold-blooded. They relied on their external environment to have their body temperatures at right. Therefore, fish, amphibians, reptiles have to rely on the temperature of their environment to heat and cool their internal organisms. Hence, they can only go and find habitats where the temperature is going to be suitable and they can have the right temperatures to survive. The other important thing is temperature also relates to water availability. So even if you are a bird or a mammal, you can't go somewhere where it's too hot because you need external water in order to survive. If the temperature is too high, that water will evaporate. If it's too cold, that water will freeze. So you need to go to the places where you can get optimum temperatures for that organism, whether that be water availability for warm-blooded animals or optimum temperatures to help them sustain efficient metabolism for every other vertebrae. Nutrients. So plants need to get phosphates, nitrates, sulfates from the soil. That helps them build up organic molecules. Some plants can exist in nutrient poor soil, and that's because they've adapted to their environment, they've developed that enable them to obtain their essential requirements. 
A good example of that is nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Now, in terms of nutrients, again, plants are always going to be taking up those nutrients, and then they're going to be passed along the food chain and food web. The important thing to note about nutrients compared to energy is nutrients are not lost through a food chain and food web. They're recycled the whole time. And next, well, early in term four, we're going to be looking at the cycles of these, so the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, the sulfate cycle, the phosphate cycle, how these nutrients are recycled through an ecosystem. But the important thing is they are never lost, they're only ever recycled. Wind. Wind is a really important one too, because strong wind can pull plants from the soil. When they pull them from the soil, their roots are no longer embedded in there, they can't get those nutrients in the water from the soil. So, in order to survive places with strong winds and plants that live in those areas, you'll find they'll have developed extensive root systems which will keep them anchored to the ground. Um, when we're looking at primary and secondary succession, which we have looked at a little bit and we'll look at in more detail, those first, those first producers that pioneer or colonise the area, they generally are they have a lot of problem with wind. They don't have those anchorage. So for example, mosses that start to form on rocks, they start to degrade the rock down, but if a long, large wind comes, they're blown away because they can't get their roots into that rock. So wind's a really big problem for succession. Uh, lastly, we are going to look at water. So plants and animals need water to survive. Salinity plays an important part of that because if it's too salty, then obviously osmosis is going to happen in the body and it's not going to help the plant. In fact, it's going to pull the water away from the plant rather than take the water into the plant. So the salinity is very important. You need to have the right salinity to prevent water moving the wrong direction. Uh, water can be damaging. So we've got waves, for example. They can dislodge organisms, particles, limpets, for example. So those organisms have adapted to have strong muscular tissue and they will clamp down wherever they've landed or wherever they've made home so that they're not going to be disrupted by the waves. So water is important because one, we need to drink it. Two, it has to be the right salinity to prevent water moving the wrong way in osmosis. And three, it can be damaging so it can actually destroy and disrupt habitats.